everyone. Today we will be discussing about the topic speed. We will be focusing on its concept, its classification, factors and the methods for training speed. Let me first introduce what speed is. Speed like strength and endurance is a conditional ability. It has a complex nature and to a large extent depends on the efficiency of the nervous system and hence it is less trainable as compared to the other conditional abilities. Thes and Scannable gave the definition that speed is the performance prerequisite to do motor actions under given conditions such as movement task, external factors, individual prerequisites in the minimum possible time. Let us now take a look at the concept of speed. Speed is used in sports for such muscle reactions or motor movements that are characterized by maximally quick alterations of contraction and relaxation of muscles. It is also the ability to execute motor actions under given conditions in the minimum possible time. In other words, the capacity of moving a limb or a part of a body's lever system or the whole body with the greatest possible speed. Speed ability is highly movement specific. Like strength and endurance, speed is also a conditional ability. Speed depends to a considerable extent on the nervous system. As a result of this, speed is more complex in nature and is comparatively less trainable as compared to strength and endurance. Let us now put a light on the classification of speed. Speed can be classified into the following five types. Reaction speed, the speed of movement, sprinting speed or locomotor ability, acceleration speed, speed endurance, reaction speed. It is the ability to respond to a stimulus in the shortest possible time. In sports, signals can be of different types, for example, visual, tactile or acoustic. Depending on the degree of complexity of the reaction required, the reaction ability can be further differentiated into simple and complex reaction ability. Next is the speed of movement or movement speed. It is the ability to execute a movement with high speed, for example in wrestling, boxing, jumping, throwing, etc. In cyclic sports, it is important in the initial phase or in some phases during the total period of the cyclic activity. For example, turns in swimming and hurdle clearances in hurdle events. In cyclic sports movements, speed is very closely bound with technique and tactical actions. Depending on the nature of movement ability, Movement speed depends on different complex factors in different sports, but it generally depends heavily on explosive strength and technique. Moving on to the next form of speed is sprinting speed or locomotor ability. It can be defined as the ability to maintain maximum speed of locomotion over as long distance as possible for maximum possible duration. Locomotor ability is important in only a few events or sports. For example, in 100 meters and 200 meters in track and field, short sprints in track cycling and speed skating, in swimming, rowing, 
etc. Locomotor ability depends to a great extent on mobility of the nervous system, which allows for higher movement frequency. It further depends on technique ability to relax and explosive strength as well. The trainability of locomotor ability is very low. Next form of speed is acceleration speed. It is the ability to increase speed from jogging to running and finally sprinting. Acceleration ability depends to a great extent on the explosive strength, technique and movement frequency. Performances in sprint events are determined to a great extent by acceleration ability. Acceleration ability is also of crucial importance in all team games and racket sports, where high running speeds are to be achieved over short distances. The last form of speed is speed endurance. It is the ability to execute cyclic or acyclic movements at high speed under conditions of fatigue. In cyclic sports, the speed endurance is required to continue movements with high speed in spite of the rapid accumulation of fatigue during the activity. In non-cyclic sports, the speed endurance is required to do movements again and again with maximum possible speed under considerable anaerobic capacity, technique and psychic factors as well. Next, we'll be discussing about the factors that determine speed. Speed is an important conditional ability and has wider application in all games and sports, both cyclic as well as acyclic. The following factors determine speed. The first factor is mobility of the nervous system. During all speed performances, the muscles have to contract and relax at maximum possible speed, for example, in sprints. The rapid contraction and relaxation of muscles is possible when the motor centers in the central nervous system undergo rapid excitation and inhibition. This action is called mobility of the nervous system. When this rapid excitation and inhibition of motor centers take place at maximum speed and for some seconds, then the excitation process tends to spread to the neighboring motor centers, that is irradiation, causing unnecessary tension in the body and thereby resulting in deterioration in speed performances. The mobility of the nervous system is trainable to a limited extent. It seems to be determined to a great extent by genetic factors. When muscles contract and relax repeatedly in a definite sequence, then the nervous system tends to adapt to this thereby resulting in speed barriers. Next factor that determines speed is muscular strength. Speed movements to a great extent depends upon explosive strength of the involved muscle. In fact, development of strength indirectly enhances speed because of the importance of explosive strength and its high trainability. Most of the times, speed performances are improved by improving the explosive strength. Explosive strength further depends on muscle composition muscle size and muscle coordination that is inter and intramuscular coordination. It also depends on metabolic processes. Except muscle composition, all other factors can be improved through training. The relative proportion of fast twitch and slow twitch fibers 
determines to a great extent the maximum possible speed with which a muscle can contract. But this is not trainable as it is genetically determined. Good sprinters have a very high proportion of fast twitch fibers whereas endurance athletes have a high proportion of slow twitch fibers. According to Hartman and Tenemann in 1986, sprinters have fast twitch fibers up to 90% in soleus muscles, whereas long distance men have slow twitch fibers up to 90% in the same muscles. The muscle composition, however, is characterized by high intermuscular and individual differences. Next factor that determines speed is technique. Technique is an important factor determining speed performance. Good technique enables the sportsperson to fully utilize his strength, flexibility, etc. to achieve high speed. The movement speed in gymnastics, combative sports, etc. is highly dependent on technique or skill. Like explosive strength, technique also aims for improving speed performance. Next factor that determines speed is the biochemical reserves and metabolic power. Phosphogen stores in the muscle should be enough to give high amount of energy if energy for maximal speed performance is needed. Moreover, the metabolic process of energy production must take place at a very high pace. Another factor that determines speed is flexibility. Good flexibility allows maximum range of movement of joints without internal resistance, thereby positively affecting speed. Flexibility also enables full utilization of explosive strength. Low flexibility leads to excessive internal resistance, muscle tension and less optimum strength application. The last factor that determines speed are the psychic factors. The following important psychic factors are essential for speed performance. They are motivation, attention and concentration, ability to relax and ability to mobilize oneself for a short duration. Apart from these factors, the anticipation ability is of high importance for quick reaction. The ability to relax the non-contracting body parts and muscles has been found to be of high importance for speed performances, especially acceleration, locomotor and speed endurance ability. But unfortunately, this ability seems to depend much on the central nervous system. And, as a consequence, it cannot be significantly improved. Next, we'll be discussing about the methods of developing speed abilities. First is development of reaction speed. It is the ability to respond to a stimulus in the shortest possible time and effectively to different types of stimuli that is visual, acoustic and tactile. The response to a tactical stimulus is the fastest and to visual stimulus is the slowest. Games and sports can be categorized as requiring simple reaction ability and complex reaction ability. The nature of exercises may comprise of learn more number of tactics, a stereotype must be achieved, shooting, hitting or throwing on uneven surfaces and to try to collect the ball, play small area games after all training sessions, 
to learn to react correctly. Next is the development of speed of movement. It is the ability to execute a movement with high speed. The speed of movement is important both for cyclic and acyclic sports. Good technique, explosive strength, flexibility and coordinative abilities are important prerequisites for movement speed and hence can be indirectly developed by improving these four factors. The nature of exercises may consist of repeating the movements many times with highest possible speed, intensity must be kept sub-maximum, volume must be optimum, density must be sufficient. Next, we'll be discussing about the development of acceleration speed. Acceleration speed can be increased by both direct or indirect methods. For improving acceleration ability indirectly, explosive strength, technique and flexibility are important prerequisites. For improving acceleration speeds directly, short sprints over a distance of 30 to 80 meters are the best. Henry found that a sprinter, when starts from a stationary position, achieves best speed in about 6 seconds. Therefore, the distance chosen should be run in about 4 to 6 seconds. However, actual distance may differ from activity to activity and also on the nature of sports. Number of repetitions are between 5 to 8. Between repetitions, full recovery is to be ensured to facilitate performance of each bout of load at maximum intensity. Next, we'll be discussing about the development of sprinting speed. It is the ability to achieve high speed from a state of low or stationary position in the short time. The intensity of 90 to 100 percent can be maintained only over a distance of 20 to 25 meters. However, this distance varies depending upon the training state and age of the sports person. In the case of a beginner or a less conditioned sports person, this distance is less. Indirect development of locomotor speed can be achieved by improving the efficiency of the central nervous system, even though it is less trainable. Explosive strength, technique and flexibility, which are trainable factors, also improves sprinting speed indirectly. Henry proved that the sprinters usually achieve their maximum speed approximately after 6 seconds. Intensity is sub-maximum or maximum. The duration must be optimum. Repetitions are generally in between 10 to 12 repetitions. The density is complete between repetitions that is for 4 to 10 minutes. The rest is given between sets in the form of active rest. And the next point that we'll be discussing is development of speed endurance. It is the ability to execute cyclic or acyclic movements at high speeds under conditions of fatigue. Speed endurance is a special speed quality and can be developed using both indirect and direct training means. Indirect development can be ensured by improving anaerobic capacity. Techniques and explosive strength can be developed as well. Optimal development of basic endurance is an important prerequisite for improving speed endurance. The nature of exercises may consist of the following. Running or cycling or swimming over slightly more distances than the actual competition, that is 10 to 20 percent more than the actual competition distance. 
running at high speed. Intensive interval methods can be used in all sports such as hockey, football, basketball, combative sports, etc. Load components are to be adjusted according to the special demands. For example, in ball games, high intensity with complete rest. Next, we'll be concluding the discussion by saying that speed like strength and endurance is a conditional ability. It has a complex nature as it depends to a considerable extent on the central nervous system. Speed is used in sports for such muscle reactions or motor movements that are characterized by maximally quick alterations of contraction and relaxation of muscles. Speed movements to a great extent depends upon explosive strength of the involved muscle. In fact, development of strength indirectly enhances speed. Good technique, explosive strength, flexibility and coordinative abilities are important prerequisites for movement speed and hence can be indirectly developed by improving these four factors. Psychic factors are also responsible for affecting performances in speed activities. With this, we conclude today's discussion. Thank you.